Starry, starry night Paint your palette blue and gray Look out on a summer's day With eyes that know the darkness in my soul All right, famous, famous song there. Has one of the most famous opening lines of any song, Starry, Starry Night. It's not the name of the song, by the way. The song's actually called Vincent, after Vincent Van Gogh. The painting, of course, is called Starry Night. Uh, there's another painting that he did that's very, very similar, same style, called Starry Night on the Rhone. And in that one, you see the Big Dipper uh, very clearly in that one. So anyway, Starry, Starry Night. That's the same guy, by the way, that wrote American Pie, that did American Pie. Great song. Measuring the Stars. As I mentioned, guys, this is the chapter where we find out everything. How do we know how far away things are and how fast they're moving and what they're made of? And we're going to start with the thing that astronomers have the most trouble with, measuring distance. Make a note of that. That's not something that's in your notes, but I guarantee you that's on the test. That is hugely important. The number one thing that astronomers struggle with is distance measuring the distance to things. And we're going to start right off the bat with maybe the most powerful tool that they have. Certainly the most precise tool that astronomers have for measuring distance, and that's good old parallax. Hopefully you remember parallax. Way back in chapter two. If not, we'll try this out again. Parallax was, we, we brought it up one time a long time ago. We were talking about when they were arguing in ancient Greece about whether the Earth could be traveling around the sun. And somebody would get up and, and, and bring up that hypothesis, and, and what would happen is the other people around would say, look, if we were traveling around the sun, as we go around the sun, the stars would seem to shift. That's when we did the thing with our thumb. So if you would, very quickly, line up your thumb with something in the room. I'm going to choose the space monkey up on the shelf there. Line up your thumb, and you switch from your right eye to your left eye. Remember this? What is your thumb doing? It's shifting. Now, something else important. Something else important. Uh, what if you move your thumb farther away? Do, do it again, and now have your thumb close and shift, and then move it far away, and tell me what you've discovered. There's less of a shift. So that's one of the most important rules of parallax. The farther away something is, the less it shifts. All right, keep that in mind. That'll be very important today. So here's how this works with measuring distances in space. Here's the Earth going around the sun, which now we know that it does. In ancient times, they didn't see the shift. Why not? The stars were too far away. The shifts are incredibly small way too small for them to measure, way, way, way too small to see with the naked eye. You have to have some precise instruments to measure it, but of course we know the Earth does go around the sun and we can measure those shifts. So what happens is when we're looking at a star here in the winter time, that's kind of like looking with your left eye. And we come around here six months later in the summertime and we look at the same star, that's kind of like looking with your right eye. And that star that's nearby will seem to shift compared to stars that are farther away. Now, look what happens. If we can measure that shift, if we can measure that angle, which we can, now look what we've set up. We've set up a nice triangle. we set up a nice triangle. We know this side of the triangle, the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Okay? We know this. What we want to know is this, the distance from us to this star. So once we have the angle, and usually what they do, they measure the whole angle and they take half of it. And now you have yourselves a little right triangle. You know the angle, you know the opposite side of the triangle, you're trying to find the hypotenuse. So what could you use when you have the opposite side and the angle and you want to find the hypotenuse? You would use the sign. You would use trigonometry, you would just use the sign. This is one of those things, we're not even going to make it that hard in here. We could, but we're, we're not going to. But that's what you would do. You'd set up a little right triangle trig there and solve for the hypotenuse. The key, of course, is measuring that angle. And look at this. This idea of setting up a triangle, triangulation, is only good for nearby stars. 
Anyway, this is only good for nearby stars because, of course, those are the only ones that shift enough for us to measure. Now, we launched a satellite a few years ago called Hipparchos. Now, this is actually named after uh, an ancient astronomer named Hipparchus. Named Hipparchus. We'll get to him in the next section, I believe. Sorry, I got the spinny wheel here. Come on now. But the Hipparchos satellite, what it does as it orbits the Earth, it is able to measure parallax much more precisely than ever before. And I'll give you the details here, hopefully, in just a second. There we go. So take a look. Thanks to Hipparchos now, we can measure the distance to about a million stars. Very, very precise distances to about a million stars out to 600 light years away. That was a huge improvement. I think before Hipparchos, maybe we were good out to about 100 light years. And now thanks to this one satellite, we're good to 600 light years. Now that's, that's amazing. That's a great step forward. But let me point something out. The distance just to the center of our own galaxy of our own city is 28,000 light years. Yeah, that's basically good within our neighborhood. If you live in Heron Bay, this is like measuring the distances to all the houses in Heron Bay, which is great, but it doesn't do you any good for all of Parkland or Coral Springs or all of Broward or all of Florida. You know what I mean? So that's the problem. It's very limited in its range, but it's very, very precise and powerful. Take a look here at our animation Guys, this would be good to throw into the eye books. Here you have a star that's close. It's going to shift a whole lot. But watch what happens when it's farther away as we go around the sun. The shift is much less. It's not going to appear to shift as much. It's just what you did with your thumb a minute ago. Okay, so that's why we're limited in range, out to about 600, <clears throat> 600 light years. All right. New term for us. Make sure this gets in the glossary there. A parsec. If you're a fan of, um, Star Wars. yes, Star Wars, Star Trek, they will often mention parsecs. That's a real thing. That's not something they made up for the movies. That is a real unit of distance. And as a matter of fact, I would say it's probably the preferred unit of distance for professional astronomers. Over what? What do we typically think of when I talk about distances to stars and things? You think of light years. You think of AUs are way too small now. Light years. A light year, just to, just to refresh your memory from chapter one, a light year is the distance light can travel in a year. A beam of light. You take a laser and you let it shine and let it go for one whole year. Well, that's going to go a long way, isn't it? Remember, a beam of light can go around the entire Earth seven and a half times in one second. So if you let it go for a year, it's going to travel about six trillion miles. That's how big a light year is. And guess what? A light year is six trillion miles. A parsec is much longer than a light year. So that's one reason astronomers like to use it. Now, there are two words I want you to think of here. Parallax, that's the par for parsec, and seconds. Why? Here's the definition of a parsec. The distance to a, sh a star showing a parallax of one arc second. Now, I better uh, review with you very briefly. An arc second. Guys, from horizon to horizon as an angle is what? 180 what? Degrees. So if you slice up the sky into 180 slices, those are degrees. Your thumb, for example, held at arm length, is about half a degree to give you a rough idea in the sky, about half a degree wide. Now, that seems like a pretty small angle, but for astronomers, it's not. You then take each degree and slice it into 60 parts, and that's an arc minute. That's really, really small angle, isn't it? But guess what? That's not small enough for the stuff we're doing today. So they took each little arc minute sliced it into 60 arc seconds. It is an incredibly, incredibly small angle. 
And so what we've done is we've said, look, if there was an imaginary star that was at just the right distance from us to shift one arc second, the distance to that imaginary star would be called a parsec. There is no star there. There are no stars exactly one parsec away. It's just a made up thing. But if there were a star there and it shifted exactly one arc second, we call that a parsec by definition. It's just something we made up as a term. It's very useful. So how does it compare then to a light year? Well, it's over three light years long. That's a good one to know. One parsec over three light years long. A parsec is larger than a light year. So that brings us to our first little math problem, converting. We'll be doing some of that, some converting. Here's your first one. How far away is Alpha Centauri? In parsecs, if it is 4.3 light years away, that's its actual distance. Why did I pick Alpha Centauri? That's right. That's our next door neighbor star system. Okay? That, that system is the closest star system to us. It's our next door neighbor. That's sort of the, that's the brightest star in that system, Alpha Centauri. How far away is it in parsecs? So recapping our calculational problems, we saw that the distance uh, to Alpha Centauri is 4.3 light years. That converts to 1.3 parsecs. You divide by 3.3, you get 1.3 parsecs. That's the equivalent of two golf balls 60 miles apart. That's how big space is. That's our next door neighbor. It's scary. Then if a star has a parallax of 0.02 arc seconds, well, to convert to parsecs, you just take the inverse. Remember, distance and the angle are inverse of each other. The farther away something is, the smaller the shift. They are literally inverse of each other. The farther away, the smaller the shift. So when, you give, when you're given this angle in arc seconds, you just flip it. Hit the 1 over x key, or take 1 divided by 0.02. So we got 50 parsecs, and if you want to convert that to light years, you multiply by 3.3. And you got, for that one, was what, 165 light years. And then we did this one, which puts the two steps together. How far away in light years is a star with a shift of 0.025 arc seconds? You flip it to make it parsecs first. And when you flip it, you get 40 parsecs. Then you multiply by 3.3 to get 132 light years. I'm going to show you something you, you may not have ever seen before. I'm going to show you our neighborhood. Most people, if I talk about your neighbors in space, you think of the planets. I like to call the planets our backyard. I don't think of it as our neighborhood. Let me show you our neighborhood. And again, some of you may not have seen this before. Now, this should be three-dimensional, of course. They try to make it somewhat 3D here. But I just want to show you who some of our neighbors are, because you may not have ever seen this before. OK, here is our sun. We know Alpha Centauri we just talked about, right, Brandy? That was our, our next door neighbor right here. Now, on here, it looks like other stars are closer, but again, that's kind of an optical illusion, right? Because it, you can't tell which ones are supposed to be kind of out of the screen and behind the screen. Here's a famous star. What's special about Sirius? It's the brightest star in our night sky. Why? Well, partly because it's really close. But the other factor is it's brighter than these other stars, isn't it? So it's really bright and really close. We'll get to that in the next section. Some other famous ones, Arcturus. You know, Arc to Arcturus. Vega, part of, the, part of the summer triangle. And then you have, like, for example, Castor and Pollux. What are they part of? Anybody know those? They're part of Gemini. In the sky, you'll notice that Castor and Pollux look like they're side by side in the sky. But again, that's an optical illusion. When we look here from the sun, they're clearly not side by side. So that's a little bit of our stellar neighborhood. I have a great art project idea, is to make a three-dimensional stellar neighborhood. I would love to have that, fishing wire, things like that, and have them hanging down, have them relative sizes to each other. I think that would be fantastic if somebody wanted to work on that. 